Dr. Edward Mabaya is a professor at Cornell University who lives now in Ithaca, New York. This week I was reading uh, something that he had written uh, recently about an account, his account of Christmases uh, in the village where he grew up in Zimbabwe, a rural village in Zimbabwe where he, would, he had grown up uh, uh, the son of a farmer and uh, I thought it was very inspirational, and I'd like to read to you what he wrote and what I read this week. Mabaya wrote, Last Christmas, my daughter Isa and I woke up to many presents, and then we enjoyed our Christmas breakfast together of omelets and sausage and cheese. And as we uh, enjoyed our abundance, I couldn't help but think about the Christmases past when I was a child growing up in a rural village in Zimbabwe. We didn't have much in my family, but I never felt that we were poor. I do have such vivid, vivid memories of the Christmas celebrations there in the village. By early December, all of the children in the village were counting down the days until Christmas. A few days before the holiday, family members who had left the village to go into the city to work began returning home for their Christmas visits and they brought with them special urban goodies. Fresh bread, and sticky buns, sausages, sodas, cookies, and condensed milk. Wearing fancy clothes they came, and their shoes. Now we in the village only wore shoes when we went to church on Sundays. At the tiny village grocery store, adults would gather around a battery-operated vinyl record player, and they would listen to the latest hit records that the people had brought back with them from the city. When the big day finally arrived, my siblings and I would wake up and right away get our chores done, sweeping of the yard and feeding the animals, and then we would go down to the river for a quick bath. By 9 a.m., we were ready to go to the classroom of the primary school where we held church each Sunday. We were wearing our best Sunday outfits, including shoes that were either usually too tight or too loose. We would hear a sermon about the birth of Jesus, and we would sing wonderful, upbeat Christmas music. When we got home, we, the celebration would continue. Now, we did not get toys or presents of clothing, nor did we expect them. What made Christmas special for us was the food. It was our late morning breakfast after church. We would have lots of white bread and a generous spread of sun jam, a very sweet, bright red can plum jam. We washed this down with a special black tea produced in Zimbabwe that was mixed with condensed milk, which was very much an upgrade from the usual plain black tea that we would drink for breakfast each day. After breakfast, we went out and we played soccer and hopscotch and jump rope with the neighbors, often exchanging stories of the delicious breakfast that we had enjoyed together. Then we would go down to the village store and we would buy candy, which was, there were only three kinds to choose from. They were all very inexpensive pieces of candy and they also had the benefit of coloring your mouth vivid colors so you could always come back and show your jealous friends the candy that you had had. Dinner was the best part of Christmas by far. We gorged ourselves on rice and chicken or goat stew. Our otherwise dull and ashy hands would be oily with the grease and the oil. We could ask on that day for seconds, which we normally couldn't. We could even sometimes ask for thirds. We would end the, after, after the dinner, we would sing Christmas songs loudly, and then we would have our nighttime prayers, where we would ask for good rains, and we would ask for better health for anyone sick, and blessings to our family members who could not be there with us. Then we would go to bed, and we would begin the countdown again of just 365 days to go till the next Christmas. Dr. Mabaya concludes with this. As I watch my daughter open presents this Christmas in Ithaca, New York, I'll be grateful that eating until she is full is not the best part of her Christmas holidays. I am happy that she can help herself 
to seconds any night of the year she wants. And while my family in Zimbabwe did not go hungry, many of them in our village were not as fortunate. So as we celebrate Christmas this year, please spare a thought, or better yet, a gift for the 795 million people who go to bed hungry every night. Well, I wanted to share with you Dr. Mabaya's memories because we do have such abundance in our lives, abundance of so many good things, and certainly a part of Christmas should be us recognizing that and giving thanks to God for the great abundance that we have. Thanksgiving should certainly be a part of every Christmas. But I also know, and I think you know as well, of the dangers of great abundance. Great abundance can keep us from seeing and recognizing and being grateful for those free gifts, for those most important blessings and gifts that we can receive each year. Blessings that cost us next to nothing. Friends and family, good food shared, music, laughter, worship, prayer, faith. These are just the kind of gifts that the Holy Family could have shared on that first Christmas. The Holy Family who had next to nothing could still enjoy these best and most wondrous gifts that God gives to us. So here today, this Christmas, may these be the gifts that we celebrate. May these be the gifts we give thanks for. May these be the gifts that we gladly give to one another and receive in return as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us bow in prayer. Loving God, thank you for all the gifts you have given. But thank you most of all for the gift of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in his name we pray. Amen. Friends, if you are looking for a church home, I invite you to come forward and to sing our final hymn today. Come forward and join with this church by confessing your faith in Jesus Christ or by transferring your membership. Let us stand now together as we are.